King Salmonin, or in Japanese, Okashira Shake. To shorten things, Okashira means boss and Shake means salmon, or according to the fan base, Salmonzilla. This thing clearly is a boss salmon, judging by the absolute size of this unit, but is it really the king? We have such limited information on this new salmonid, we only really get around 10 seconds of footage and a small chunk of info of its possible names. The footage we get doesn't even show much either about their powers and abilities, they kinda just sit there. And to be honest, in the black and white footage, they kinda don't look that big compared to the stage, platform, or these fishnets. It would obviously help to see the scale of this King Salmonid compared to an Inkling, but it definitely just looks like a Mega Mushroom sized Quahog here. The area they're on also doesn't seem to be a sudden drop off in the ocean floor, so this is still probably part of the shore, just a deeper end compared to the shallow end. However, in the thumbnail art, the size of the Salmonid looks much bigger if the helicopter is to scale. It could just be an exaggeration for the art though. And real quick, I just wanted to say that originally, I thought these ink trails were some kind of ink missile shooting the big salmonid, but these are just the inklings flying onto the stage. But what are the chances we'll still be able to get on the helicopter and rain down ink onto the king's salmonid to fight back? I mean, why else would we be needing a helicopter? I know we upgraded from a boat to a helicopter since Grisco is thriving, but why else a helicopter? More on that later, since now it's been revealed that this is a King Salmonid, what kind of hierarchy do the Salmonid even have? Clearly the hierarchy looks simple right now with the lesser Salmonids such as Chum, Small Fry, Quahawk, and Snatchers being the foot soldiers to overwhelm in masses, while all the other bosses are the big guns, the enforcers with stronger abilities and endurance. Thus putting our brand new King Salmon on top of the hierarchy commanding all the other Salmonid. So this makes it a three tier hierarchy similar to perhaps a typical bee colony. Unless there's a higher power behind the King Salmon, which explains why this one doesn't look that big and this one looks much bigger. Even though, you know, they're probably the same thing. Meaning there could possibly be multiple King Salmonid while there's a bigger single ruler above all the Salmon. Then again, this is Salmon Run, the PvE Splatoon game mode, which wasn't really given any kind of story quest in Splatoon 2, unless in Splatoon 3 there is this time around, giving us more lore for Salmon Run. So for now, the chances of there being a higher, bigger, stronger power than the King Salmon is a throwaway, so guess this guy is the true king for now. Which brings me to the next question, what are the origins of the King Salmonid? How did they become such an absolute unit? Well, I have a couple ideas to how this may have happened. The first one is a simple one. Our King Salmon is just the mega evolution to the Quahog. So the evolution chart for Salmon, it sort of looks a little bit like this. So we start off with an egg. That egg hatches into a small fry. From there, that small fry chooses what it wants to do next. A small fry can either turn into a snatcher or fly fish with different requirements and it stops its evolution span right there. Or they could turn into a chum to further continue their choices. Because once they're a chum, they have multiple options to turn into either a handful of different bosses or just turn into a quahog. Steelhead, stingers, maws, and grillers are kind of just their own things, but once a chum turns into a quahog, they have a chance to go beyond. Because Quahawk hardened in battle with a ton of experience get the chance to take the King Salmon at evolution process to become the king of all the salmon via trial by combat. Essentially it's just a Quahawk battle royale to see who gets to become the new king. Or another simpler origin is that a Quahawk stumbled upon some kind of radioactive waste and turned into the king salmon it is now. Unless this king is royalty within the salmon hierarchy and is looking for their lost son aka our little buddy. But then again, more mixing of Salmon Run and Story Quests, which once again, would be pretty neat. I'm sure this is just a mega boss with their origins being the process of evolution or being the strongest Salmon of all. But anywho, let's talk about gameplay. Now, there's no way we won't have a chance to be able to splat this Salmon, right? And I know that's probably not a good mindset to have since it further makes us the villains of the Salmonid, but then again, Salmonid are kind of chaotic and destructive, but I mean bigger equals better, right? 
And from the trailer we get, we really didn't see much new gameplay, just two new bosses and the big reveal. So there's no way you reveal the king and it isn't a boss we get to fight. But how is this gonna play out? What powers and ability does the king have? Well, clearly the king won't be easily splatted, and the way the gameplay could work is that they menacingly appear from the distance slowly approaching the shore, and our task is to stop them from... doing... something. You know, now that I think about it, what's the reason for the king's salmonid showing up? Are we luring it with this giant fried... something on the crane to splat them and take even more power eggs? But then again, it's just in their nature to destroy, which is why they're joining the fight this time around. But back to the gameplay, the King Salmon Mega Boss could just be a simple defensive, similar to the Kohawk Knight, where we're given ink cannons to defend from the Kohawk, but this time around, we get a swarm of chum and bosses with the looming threat of the King Salmon in the distance. And as for powers and abilities, I guess the Salmon King could just lob debris at us or wads of ink to finish us off. And maybe even every time they roar, it sends all the swarming chum into a frenzy. Or the mega boss fight has multiple phases in which we have to use the ink cannons on the surface until the water level rises and we learn that the cannons aren't enough so we have to take flight onto the helicopter to finish off the king. Because why else would we have helicopters, you know? I know Grizzco has more money and they transport us, but why not mount some splatlings and tenta missiles and bada bing bada boom? You know? But then what would happen if something the size of this absolute unit gets splatted? Who knows, maybe an earthquake or something. I do hope we get more info soon. I know it's still February and the release date for Splatoon 3 is summer 2022, which summer tends to be in between June and August, which gives us three to six months left to wait. So maybe soon enough we'll get more info about it all. Maybe the original release date was close to be revealed, only to be covered by tape. But in the end, all we can really do is wait and theorize, which is really fun. But what do you think? How big of a role will the King Salmon play in Splatoon 3's overall story? What are their origins? What kind of gameplay do you think the King will provide us with? Make sure to tell me in the comments and hey, why not like and sub for more Splatoon and Nintendo content, hmm? Anyways, that's all I have for now, so have a good one. Goodbye.